Right, welcome back to daytime. Well, tis the season to do a lot of stuff. Why not go see a show? And why not go see a show with an itty bitty bit of a twist? called a pantomime and for those people that don't know what a pantomime is it is a show that allows let's say uh, more enhanced viewer participation uh, than what is traditionally offered and KW Little Theater celebrating its 75th year uh, bringing some of the best uh, theater in the area to you folks to you peoples uh, is 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 offering this year a show called Sleeping Cinder White now if you're confused if you think that my dyslexia has taken hold and made me read things incorrectly well, joke's on you, because that's actually the name of the show. And joining us now is its director, David Atos, as well as G uh, the narrator of the show, Jill Skeen. Now, Jill, you have a particularly Im important part in the shaping of this show. <laughs> and, and maybe I'll get you to describe Sleeping Cinder White. Okay, well, um, the gist of it, it's a mishmash of, well, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, and Snow White. And it kicks off with um, they've lost their narrator. And so the story starts going with the narrator not sure what he I, I play a gentleman um, he's supposed to be doing and so he tries to read and the scripts the the stories everywhere and all the pages are out of order and so it's just a great fairy tale with different people um, there's a band in it um, Cinder White and well I don't want to ruin anything but uh, they're fantastic can, can, I, can I get a little secret away here like Absolutely. if this show will feature <laughs> the seven evil dwarf stepsisters <laughs> because that's how I remember it and uh, David, I mean, as a, from a as a from a, a direct a, a director standpoint, I mean, I mean you're you're you've kind of again, it's 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 like a, a completely confused pastiche of all these beloved fairy tales, and and you've taken it into a completely different place. I mean, w how do you do it? <laughs> the uh, the biggest thing that I do is I rely on my actors. They bring a lot to the table. Um, everyone knows all these fairy tales. They've known them since their childhood and they know the different parts in it and they're having fun playing putting those different parts together occasionally I see something that I think would be super funny and I ask them to pull that out and and they just do it they do what I ask and and it turns out great on stage and I think anyone who comes to see it is really going to enjoy it well again, again because of the, the nature of, of how it is taking you know touchstones of you know shows that were or uh, fairy tales that we're familiar with and then really just kind of mashing them up and throwing them at something different I can imagine that's only going to enhance the pantomime component because I mean as an audience member you're you're you, you're just going to want to get involved no oh, absolutely, absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so one of the things with pantomimes is asking for audience suggestions and everyone's going to have their own suggestions from all of the different fairy tales that we're talking about that we're, that we're doing in the show so when it comes time for, for the audience to shout out suggestions, there's just going to be a wide range. Uh, everyone's going to be really excited, want to see their suggestion get used on stage. And this is something that, that's good for the, the entire family. This is not age uh, particular. It, it's something that all, you know, from five through to 500, they could, they could come and enjoy um, because there's going to be humor for everyone here. Very much so, yeah. There's, there's the simple humor for the children. There's the bright colors, the songs, the dancing. The fact that kids just love yelling at people on stage. <laughs> it, it's one of, the, one of their favorite parts. And then there are the more subtle jokes, the little bits of innuendo for the adults to mm -hmm. enjoy that, that will sail over some children's heads, but the, the adults will enjoy it there. Good. Now, Joe, I have to ask you a question. You, you said right off the top that, that you're playing a man. How, how are you getting in touch with your inner manness for <laughs> this? Well, I've actually got, gotten a lot of suggestions from the men in my life and mm -hmm. my mannerisms, so to speak, um, how to walk, how to turn. Um, and typically in a pantomime, you have cross-casting, but with my particular character, um, I'm trying to completely hide the feminine qualities. So even how I do my hands, how I turn, um, just basically trying to dress like a, like a guy. I, I'm, 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 I'm sad to see that you're not participating in Movember to try and find <laughs> that, that male character of yourself. But uh, I mean, yeah, I, <laughs> can't you see? <laughs> no, no. You yeah, haven't seen the women in my family, as I'll always say. <laughs> <laughs> They're not watching right now. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it, it, it is. I mean, it challenges you as, a, as an actor. Um, mm -hmm. but, but to be uh, invested in something that, that is, it really sounds like, like not only an incredible amount of fun for, for the audience, but the actors themselves must be just having the best time on the planet. Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't have any disgruntled... Uh, evil dwarf stepsisters <laughs> not, you know, not, as a result of this but we do have an evil stepmother and, mm -hmm. and uh, evil stepsisters as well and they have phenomenal songs phenomenal presence the costumes are something I'm really really excited to see on stage and you're already fortunate the, the response so far has already been great in that you've already sold out the uh, December 4th show 
Both of them. Both, Both of them. them. So, yes. but there are shows. I mean, it, but performances are starting November 25th, which is this <laughs> week. Uh, so we want to encourage people to get tickets because these are the sort of things. Again, if you're looking for something to to do as a family or a group of friends, just for a laugh, and, and to, to, I mean, you're obviously going to ask that, that people check any uh, produce or weapons at the do at the door. This is not the Rocky Horror <laughs> Picture Show. Uh, keep it to shouting, uh, and and nice shouting, nice shouting. Um, but yeah, I mean, we want to get people up to the show so they can take it in. And again, this is 75th year for your company. Uh, right. What a great, uh, great, great show, great concept. And, and so if they want to find out about getting tickets, how would they do so? Well, there are, uh, there are three ways to get tickets now. Um, if you want to use a credit card, you can go to the center in the square, mm -hmm. and we have a deal with them where they can use credit cards to buy tickets. Or they can c contact KWLT directly, either through uh, email, uh, boxoffice at kwlt.org, or through our phone number, 519-886-0660. Uh, both those ways you'll be able to reserve tickets. Mm -hmm. They'll be held for you at the door, and yeah, you pay for them there. And again, we have the website just up there for more information. Now, I want to talk a bit now, uh, about the company. Again, this is a company that, that encourages, to, uh, encourages uh, its members to uh, understand all facets of theatre, uh, front and back. Um, and 75 years, I mean, obviously you're doing something right that this company has stayed together and continues to put on really great shows for the last 75 years. <laughs> yes. well, I've, I've personally been involved with the theatre for a little over two years now, and in that time I have I've built sets, I have been an actor in shows, I have hung lights and aimed lights, and now this is actually my first time directing. So, yeah, this, this company is great for anyone in the, in the uh, community who feels they want to get involved with theatre. There's tons of options for and, them. And as a director, because you've experienced all these aspects, do you find it changes the way that you would approach directing? It does. Um, having some experience with acting, uh, it lets me know what, what actors are capable, what I can draw out of them. Um, the experience with the lighting lets me know that uh, how I can light the stage, how I can make sh uh, get different effects to evoke different moods and things like that. So wow. mm -hmm. it, is, it is really great. And Jill, how about yourself? Um, well, you mentioned that we've been around for 75 years and in the community we've uh, received phenomenal support. Um, a, a few years ago our, our theatre burnt down mm -hmm. and uh, the community has just been amazing, absolutely amazing for us. Um, they've supported us through donations, through coming to shows, through being involved, through everything. So um, we wouldn't be here without Kitchen of Waterloo. And again, I mean, you continue to put on phenomenal shows. KWLT.org uh, for more information. And go out and see Sleeping Cinder White. Yeah, I said it. Sleeping Cinder White. Uh, fun for everyone, no matter what age. Uh, and just uh, maybe ring some throat lozenges because you'll be doing some shouting. <laughs> to you both, thank you very much. Uh, break a leg for the show. Thank you. Uh, you know, and again, good luck with your inner manness. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds really, really fun. There's more daytime to come, so stay with us.